Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research Education Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. I'm Kate Stewart, and I'm here today with Molly Seal. Dr. Molly Seal, um, we're so glad to have you back. You graduated in 2002 in Cancer Biology Department. That's so right. Thanks for coming. And tell us a little bit about what you did here at Vanderbilt. Good. Thanks, Kate. It's great to be here. Uh, when I was at Vanderbilt, I did my PhD program here. I was in Al Reynolds' lab in the cancer biology department. Um, when I was in his lab, I studied the protein P120. So P120 is a protein that is involved in cell adhesion. And I was specifically looking at the interaction between P120 and E. cadherin and un uncoupling that interaction to try to understand how that affected cell motility and cell metastasis in cancer cells. Okay, great. So what, did, what have you done since? I stayed on in the same lab that I did my PhD on for a short time and did a short postdoc there just really to finish up some product projects. And then I took a position with a contract medical liaison company. Uh, this was my first job outside of the lab, and it was an industry type position where I was hired as a medical liaison on somewhat of a temporary basis. Um, and I worked out of my home right here in Nashville and um, took this position as really representing in the field a research and development person to be um, Amgen's representative to talk about the research and the products that they are developing. Okay. So your current role now is a more managerial role. So what are the differences between the, the medical science liaison role and now what you're doing? Good. So I um, shortly after I took this contract liaison role, I was invited to apply for a permanent position with the company, with Amgen, as a medical liaison. And I uh, did that for the next eight years, actually. Um, and then for about the last six years, I've been a regional manager of medical liaisons. Um, as a manager, I actually get on a plane every single week and fly somewhere, so there's a lot of travel involved. But my main responsibilities are working with, coaching, and developing uh, a team. I have a team of about eight medical liaisons um, across the country, and I do kind of half and half of working directly with them to help them with their with their job, their performance, uh, but also working internally, helping create strategic plans around what our what our medical liaisons do, helping with the training for them, and um, and really helping set goals and helping them achieve those. As a medical liaison, um, the the role was a little different. Um, I was really on the ground. As a, a medical liaison, lots of times it's called a medical science liaison, um, so MSL type of role. Um, in that role, you're really on the ground going into clinics and hospitals for the most part, meeting one-on-one -on -one with physicians mainly, also sometimes pharmacists or nurses, especially nurses that are involved in research studies, and having one-on-one -on -one discussions typically across their desk um, about with sharing information about the, the molecules that your company is developing. Um, sometimes it's also speaking about products that are already on the market, especially if there's a new data update, if there's new research going on, or if there's some major safety update with, with an already approved molecule. Okay, so you had to have a very specialized set of skills that you probably did not gain from your Vanderbilt training. What were some of those skills that you had to gain to be in that role? So the, the two things I would say that I had to learn once I started in this role was, was about business and about clinical medicine. Um, I didn't really have any exposure to the business side of things in the lab. And um, just learning how a biotech company works, understanding kind of the business savvy piece of, of who does what and, and what the order of things need to be. Um, also, also the, the clinical medicine piece. So I was, I, I was very preclinical in the lab. Um, the first line of the grants I wrote, the first line of my articles always related to cancer. Uh, big picture, it related to cancer, but I was talking about cell and, and mouse experiments. And so uh, I really had to learn about how patients are treated, um, how physicians practice, um, what evidence-based medicine looks like, um, and, and get very comfortable with clinical trial design. And, um, and so there was, there was a lot to learn, and, and um, it, it took a while. That was a struggle in the job. Um, but that scientific foundation that I got at Vanderbilt really, really gave me a good base to work off of. Okay. 
So tell me how this role is a good fit for you personally. This role, um, my job is different every day. Uh, so, so there's a lot of fast pace in this job. Things are changing often. Uh, we may buy another company and suddenly have a new molecule we're about to launch. Uh, we may get disappointing results from a phase one study um, or, or a phase two or phase three study that we really had our hopes up for. And all of a sudden that molecule has failed and it's gone and you switch gears and you focus on something else. So, so while at times that can be disappointing, it's also really exciting. And so there's always something new. I, I love the cutting edge science and there's um, no lack of articles and of information to learn about. So I really like that pace. I also love the flexibility in this job. Um, as I mentioned, I work from home and um, and that's that's um, it, it's very different than coming to an office each day and having colleagues that you interact with. But it gives you a lot more flexibility uh, in your schedule and in just just how you work. So I've, I've really enjoyed that. OK, good. Would you uh, think that a postdoc is required to do the role that you have done? Yeah, I definitely do. Okay. Um, in in positions like ours, we uh, at my company we require a doctoral degree plus at least two years of some kind of postdoctoral experience. Uh, now that doesn't have to be a traditional postdoc, but it needs to be some kind of related experience after a doctorate. So it can be a research postdoc. It can be some kind of a a clinical experience, um, whether that's more training or being involved in some kind of a, a actual role being involved in, in clinical research. Okay, great. So I'm sure there were some skills that you had to gain after you left Vanderbilt to be prepared for this job. What are some of those skills that um, you, would, you would tell graduate students now or postdocs now that they need to gain in order to be best prepared for that type of role? I think communication skills is the number one thing. Um, all of those times that in grad school you spend presenting at lab meetings, preparing for journal clubs, um, writing grants, writing articles, it, it seems kind of tedious at the time, but all of those hours really pay off because communication skills is probably the, the most important thing in this role. Um, we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with people, but we also do a lot of large presentations. And because we are field-based, we uh, have a lot of email communications and, and many, many phone calls and WebExes. And so those communication skills, especially when you're not meeting with someone in person, are even more important. So I'd say that's, that's something that um, it's really important to focus on and to, to get as, as much experience as possible with. Okay, good. So in your role, I'm sure you've done a lot of networking either you know through your career path, but also just in the role that you have. What are some of the strategies that work for you personally to network? So again, coming back to the way that this position is where I don't see the people that I work with very often, I really try to make the most of those times that I can see them in person. Um, so if we're at our headquarters office for a meeting, if we're at a large Congress somewhere, I try to connect with folks uh, so that I can understand what they're doing. They can understand my role and, and the goals of my organization so that we can potentially look for some synergy. Um, I find it, it really fulfilling when, when I meet someone in a different department in my company and we can connect the dots to figure out how it is that, that we can help each other across our groups. So I'm looking for opportunities all the time to do that. Um, and honestly, just keeping in touch with people. Uh, the relationships that we build in grad school, the relationships that, that folks will build, will, will build along the way in their postdoc or in, in other training, will be with them forever. And making sure that you, that you keep those connections over time, I think is really important. Okay, great. Is there a particularly memorable experience while you're here at Vanderbilt that has really stuck with you that you would want to share? I think actually the, one of the most significant things for me being at Vanderbilt was just the relationships I made. I made some of the best friends of my life here. I met my husband and, um, and I have uh, mentors and friends here that I still keep, keep in touch with. And so the, the people, maybe even more than the science, was what I, I still hang on to and um, has been so important for me even, even uh, many years later. Very nice. So if you have any words of wisdom now for graduate students or postdocs, what, what would that be? Um, I hope that they will know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. When you're in graduate school, when you're in your postdoc, 
I know it seems, um, it seems like it will never end. You don't know when or if you will finish. And there's so much more after you're, after you're done beyond the lab. There's, there's so much more out there. Um, you know, whether that means time spent with family and friends, um, maybe starting a family, maybe um, um, getting more involved in, in your community. There's, there's so much out there left in life. And I think if I had a little glimpse of that um, and, and how amazing that that could be, at that time, it would have made um, trudging through some of those days in grad school um, a little bit easier. And so, so I hope people can can look forward and know that there's that there's better things to come if if they're having a tough time, and that, again that they're getting a great foundation in their training that will stay with them forever. Very nice. Thank you so much for coming back. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you.